Hello my friends, welcome again to my video channel. Today we continue our work on the Drake TR7, especially on the VCO board. In part 3 we have seen that the fault, the problem of the non-locking VCO is obviously in the VCO part. I'm, I'm very careful, <laughs> as you hear. It's a little bit difficult. Uh, any PLL circuit is a closed loop and to find a problem in a closed loop is not so easy. Maybe I will cut this loop and insert a, a DC voltage in it to see whether the problem is in the VCO itself or anywhere else. So let's start. First I will check some components which are suspects in the PLL loop. Here we have four such diodes <coughs> that generate a, a threshold and uh, makes it possible to charge up this capacitor for the course tuning very rapidly. Only 100 kilo ohm is the limiting resistor and when the voltage reaches its destination level then these diodes cut off and then we have only this 10 megaohm resistor in parallel to control this one microfarad capacitor and the uh, course tuning. So I will check these diodes whether they are okay. Additionally I have a look at the fine tuning at this diode, cap diode whether it's okay or not. Then we have here resistor capacitor and maybe I will also look at these diodes here in the VCO. There are two diodes, this one and uh, this one to ground. They are stabilizing the uh, oscillation, maybe there's a problem. So let's start first with these four diodes. I always check one diode and the other three are anti-parallel. That's important to know when I check, for example, this diode plus and minus. For the negative level minus plus, we have here these three diodes anti-parallel in series. In series anti-parallel. So we measure in positive direction this diode and in, in the inverse direction these three diodes. I do it with, a, with my component test on my scope to get an, uh, an imagination how the diode behaves with current and with uh, various voltages. This component tester is a rather simple tester. It's a horizontal voltage and vertical it's a current. When I make a short circuit we have the current flowing, no voltage. The peak voltage is approximately 10 volt and the peak AC current is 10 milliamps. So the RMS voltage is 6 to 7 volt RMS and 6 to 7 volt RMS uh, milliamps. When I connect this to the first diode, one of the four diodes, we see the diagram. We see in positive direction, I only have two hands, not three hands. We see here one diode in forward direction and in the reverse direction, the series uh, circuit of three diodes. Therefore we have a little bit of rounded shape and this is a sharp, this is 0 0.6 volt and this is 1.8 volt. And when I go around to the various diodes, we always have the same picture. This one, this one, and this one. So all four diodes are obviously okay. And now I do another circuit, input to output, then we have two diodes in series in one direction and two diodes in series in the other direction. So the picture is like this. We have 1.2 volt in, in forward and 1.2 volt in reverse direction. So I can say these four diodes are okay. Now I check the diodes in the gate of the oscillator to stabilize the uh, biasing. This one diode to ground obviously okay. The other diode is this one. I go to the cap diode for the fine tuning. It's a circuit like this in the negative voltage direction. Of course, we have uh, conductivity 0 0.6 volt in the positive direction. This is not a fault. This is the a resistor which is connected to the cathode as decoupling resistor. There's a decoupling resistor. When I go to the other diodes of the low VCO where we have no problems, the picture is the same. 
So I think the cap diode is also okay. It makes no trouble. Maybe of course the capacity could uh, not be stable. But this is another topic. Before we make any checks of the components, let's have a look at the board. There can be identified some repair attempts. First thing I see the MC4046 is mounted on a socket. This is not typically for these boards. Drake in those days didn't use sockets. And I see on the on the rear side signs of soldering. We can identify here that it has been soldered. Sorry you can't see it. It has been soldered here and here. So I'm quite sure that someone swapped this IC and tried to, to repair it, whatever it means. Another uh, point is these two components. It's a resistor and this is a, is a joke. 4, 7 times dot 1. It is 4.7 microhenry. This is a, a version of uh, chokes which is not used on this board. All chokes are with copper, blank copper, only a little bit isolated, but not this type. And the resistor here, 4.7K, is different from this one. And this is the series resistor and a joke for the cap diode for the fine tuning. Someone was in there and swapped also these two components. Maybe they were faulty, I can't imagine. So someone was in and uh, realized that there's a problem and uh, also tried to, to check it. But obviously it didn't check it. The only original is the cap diode for the fine tuning. The diode checker says the component test is okay, but this means nothing. Well, I will focus now on the uh, PLL circuit. This is a, a tantalum cap in the feedback which stabilizes the uh, PLL loop, a resistor, a resistor in series, series resistor. And these are the caps for the power supply. There's also a choke in series. Maybe we have a problem here. Again, the PLL works with this VCO board, with this VCO on the board, but not with this VCO. But they have different characteristics again, so it's theoretically possible. And we have seen that sometimes the oscillation comes back and it is stable also for the high VCO and sometimes not. So maybe the PLL is good enough for this VCO, but not good enough for this one. Could be, so we will check in the next step the components here around the PLL. I took out this tantalum cup, dot one microfarad, 100 nanofarad, which is in the feedback loop of this op amp. And we can measure 99.5 nanofarad, quality factor of 60. So this tantalum cap is, is perfect. We have checked now these four diodes. I took out this 10 mega ohm resistor, it's okay. 100K is okay. This negative feedback, dot one microfarad we have seen is okay. The series resistor, 5.1 ohms is also okay. I made a thorough check of these resistors. It, the voltage here 16.2 volt. At this point is okay, so I assume all these resistors are also okay. What I have seen, well, we have checked also this one regarding DC and uh, resistance. The joke. This we checked it in the uh, last video, took it out. The next suspect is this one. MV209, it's a cap diode for the fine tuning. We have here the fine tuning. This is the original one. Someone swapped these two components without result. But this one is obviously the original one. I don't see any signs of, uh, of soldering. Maybe this is a, a problem for the stability when we have here uh, jumps in the capacity. We checked it with, uh, with a DC tester, component tester, as I've shown. But this says nothing about capacity. Maybe we have a problem with the capacity. I've swapped this cap diode, MV209. This one is for the fine tuning. 
coarse tuning of these diodes as we have seen for coarse tune and fine tune is this one here we have the replaced resistor and uh, inductor cap diode i replaced it the original cap, cap diode mv209 has a capacity between 5 and 30 picofarad maximum is 29 and the ratio is between 5 and 6 so when we divide 30 by 6 we have 5 picofarad 5 to 30 picofarad i don't have this diode in the moment but i use another type it's a bb109 bravo bravo 109g and i replaced it we can see here this one and now the check shows that it works now can't can't believe Fourteen megahertz. I switch to twenty-one. Uh, it needs some cleaning. Twenty-eight, twenty-one, fourteen. We still have a problem here with the passband tuning. The setting of the passband tuning is not correct. There's a problem. I think it's in the uh, analog switch. But now it is locked, and when I touch the oscillator unlocked comes back again okay the switch here that's okay no contact problems it works now I have to look now for the original MV209 I don't like any substitutes with this transceiver with this crackling noise I'm sure it's a switch okay there's a low band VCO and that is the high band you see I'm in the mode USB but the setting is for LSB I have to align it above the carrier we have a jump it is the analog switches i think Okay, but the problem I think is solved. It was indeed this cap diode for the fine tuning. Maybe if there's another problem with the, or I'm sure there's a problem with the passman tuning, but this diode here was the culprit. I look for other problems on the board. Maybe the crackling sound is caused by bad solder connections or we have another problem here. Could be, but in general, the diode was a bad guy. This one. I will examine it. Maybe the reverse voltage is not okay for this diode with higher voltages. Well, that's it for the moment. I do a short test of the old cap diode which caused the problem. <coughs> I have it connected here to 30 volt via a microamp meter. Full scale is one microamp DC. It's a chopper uh, instrument, it operates with a chopper amplifier, therefore it is very sensitive also in the uh, DC ranges. This is the input and the output. This is a cathode, positive, I have a 10k resistor from current limitation. This is a cathode and the anode, the output goes back to the um, power source. Here we have the, the input, I will connect it now to the input, 30 volt, goes through the a clamp here to the cathode and back to the instrument the zero point is not uh, precisely adjusted it's due to the uh, wrong orientation the instrument is, is designed for horizontal operation 
you see on the on the scale here, this a rectangular sign, this, 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 and this indicates that the instrument has to be operated horizontally, then the mechanical zero point is okay, but that's not the topic at the moment. I only wanted to show you that there is no, nearly no uh, difference. I have here 30 volt plus connected to the meter and the needle moves a little bit. I'm not sure whether, whether uh, you can see it. Yes, we can see it when we have full scale one microamp. This is 0 0.1 microamp, that's 100 nanoamp. And one, one tick here is 10 nanoamps, and we are below 10 nanoamps. So this is within the specification. So there is no isolation problem in this diode. I will do another check and noise test. I connect my signal tracer to the cathode and to ground and to see whether we have any noise which is generated by this diode. The test with my uh, signal tracer <coughs> is rather simple. I use this 10K resistor as a biasing resistor for the diode plus in and the probe is connected between the cathode of the diode and ground, ground is the anode, and this is a neg negative pole, plus pole, I feed in 30 volt and listen here whether I can hear any signs of, of crackling, noise or similar which could indicate that there is a short problem with the isolation but on the other hand you would have seen it with a nano ammeter or micro ammeter there was nothing but short pulses can be heard in this way and when I switch on my uh, signal tracer I have no voltage applied in the moment. I apply voltage 20 volt, 30 volt, nothing. No difference in the sound. That's me, of course. But nothing hurt, so the diode is electrically regarding isolation okay the only assumption i have is is, uh, is the assumption that the capacity is not stable in this diode anyhow i will swap the diode by the original one not a provisional solution the uh, receiver is okay i have it running maybe you can hear it Twenty one, twenty eight, fourteen, seven, five, and so on. I clean the contacts a little bit. Also, here I have to clean the contacts as I know they are not cleaned up to now, but I think that that's not a problem. The problem is really the cap diode, and I think the crackling noise is gone by cleaning the contacts especially the PCD contacts for the PCD uh, input for the translator. Okay, that's it. And we can continue to the next topic. Now we are at the end of part four. The problem with the VCO is solved. I ordered some new cap diodes. It's not so easy to find a source for it, which is not in China, which is in Europe. And I hope the source is Serious, I, I bought some uh, semiconductors from this source, especially for, for Drake, for Drake's here in Europe, and I think it is a reliable source. Hope so. I will see when they arrive. The price is acceptable again. Well, uh, I ordered uh, some more diodes because the same cap diode is used in a, on another board, on the passpan tuning board, where we have the problem with the passpan shift. And this is also controlling a, a cap diode, which is an MV201, 209, MV209, same diode. Maybe we have the same problem in the oscillator, in the BFO oscillator, which is controlled by these uh, switches and the, the knob here. So that a, a swapping of this diode is also necessary. But I have another idea what it could be. Anyhow. 
Stay healthy, stay tuned. See you on this channel.